So the city of Johannesburg speaker Margaret Annals will uh, today reveal the senior counsel that will lead the special independent investigation committee in the metro. This uh, following allegations of fraud, corruption, implicating officials and councillors. The committee will also look into the city's former executives, including the former mayor, Dr. Mpopalate, who allegedly authorized fraudulent probes into councillors by the group's Forensic and Investigation Unit. Established in 2016, the unit is meant to investigate the theft of assets and maladministration. While well, joining us for this discussion is the DA caucus leader in the city of Johannesburg, Belinda Kayser Achonzonjoku, who is joining us live. Belinda, good morning. Thank you so much for making time for us. What do you expect to hear from the speaker later on today? And what's the Democratic Alliance's take on the stance that has been taken by the speaker? Good morning, Aldrin, and good morning to your viewers. Um, Aldrin, it's unfortunate um, that uh, we are not uh, privy to exactly the details of what the speaker will announce today. Uh, but obviously, as the DA, we always welcome investigations uh, into any, uh, whether it was abuse of power or any malfeasance, uh, because we are a party that believe in the rule of law and transparency. And, uh, you know, obviously, we'll have to wait and see uh, what she's announcing today and exactly the framework. Uh, of, of what she will be announcing today. Yep. Is it clear as yet whether this, investi or this unit will also be investigating the conduct of the GFIS? Do you know anything of that regard? Uh, Aldrin, we will not be surprised um, because it seems as if uh, the, this doomsday uh, PA-ANC-EFF coalition is bent on stripping GFIS of its power. Uh, we've seen it happen before. Remember, we opened a case against uh, the former speaker, uh, Councillor Makubela, previously, uh, because we believe that they wanted to, uh, at the time, interfere with the workings of GFIS and uh, interfere with possible outcomes of uh, what GFIS was doing. We're not surprised because, uh, as you know, we are currently uh, dealing with uh, not only the court matter with the city manager, uh, but also also, the DA has also uh, raised the alarm on the VIP protection policy that we deem irregular. So we believe some of these, a lot of these are distractions to try and deviate the public's uh, interest from that to try and have counter investigations uh, to try and influence a court, uh, um, a court outcome. Yeah, but wasn't that decision taken last year already to strip the GFIS of its power, the GFIS, as you speak of it? Yes, it was taken last year. And obviously, you know, as you know, if you couldn't recall, the DA had rejected it. But remember, some of the uh, concerns we had raised had not gone away. And some of the concerns we had raised with regards to uh, the city manager's involvement in uh, um, the GFIS uh, situation uh, had also not gone away. And that is why we are of the view that this is an attempt by, and the timing, the motivation, is an attempt to deviate uh, and try and influence an, a court outcome. Yeah. As the DA's current caucus leader, have you ever looked into whether um, the previous caucus um, um, under the stewardship of your, pre, of, your, of your successor, sorry, of your predecessor, um, found any evidence at all with regard to the allegations that have been made in that report as well, um, that some DA members, including uh, Dr. Paul Palate, were actually involved in the unlawful, um, the unlawful investigations against some council members? Uh, let me uh, just say, uh, Aldrin, um, most of the – yes, I've looked at the allegations, and remember I was also a member of the mayoral committee at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we believe it was un – it's unfounded. Um, in fact, uh, when we raise alarm, the city and the speaker responded by investigating the person who raised the alarm. I was also mentioned at some point – to have been um, investigating councillors, which is untrue. Um, and obviously the city has not proven any evidence or paperwork that, uh, uh, you know, there was any wrongdoing. Uh, I believe that this is, is the, the speaker is allowing herself 
to be used uh, not only uh, by the city manager uh, with the situation that is currently in court, but to also uh, influence that court outcome and to ensure that there is no screening, no vetting to ensure ANC cadres and aligned with the GLU gets into the city uh, so there is no scrutiny. And because basically uh, we are getting reports from uh, officials as well that are uh, giving us uh, the, the impression that they are being victimized when sharing concerns and verbal instructions are given. And then they are being victimized and uh, being investigated and put on special leave for frivolous uh, uh, matters. So GFIS uh, is currently being used as a tool for the GLU to victimize uh, uh, not only uh, uh, official, senior officials, but also anybody who speaks against the GLU at this point. Okay, but the DA will cooperate with that investigation? Of course, we're a party that believe in the rule of law. If there's any malfeasance, anything wrong, we will cooperate, uh, as we always do. We do not have any problem with uh, cooperating. Uh, what our concerns are is whether the speaker is not overstepping her mandate uh, of uh, announcing some of these and also investigations, because there are adequate me measures in the city and in the rules of council that uh, has to do uh, with uh, councillor, uh, if, if there's any councillors uh, that has to do uh, with councillor, um, you know, uh, councillors that are not following uh, the rules. Yeah, um, Belinda, I'm going to ask you something. I know this is, not, this is nothing to do with the city of Johannesburg, but um, this is just me trying to find out whether there's anything um, to this at all. So in Akurulene, we saw what happened last week with the election of a new mayor. Um, and we know the relationship between the ANC and the EFF, um, especially in Ekuruleni. Um, from the Democratic Alliance Society in the city of Johannesburg, do things look stable? Is there a possibility of a motion of no confidence, perhaps? Um, what's your assessment of um, the government of local unity and how they are cooperating? Eldred, it's, it's ironic. I was expecting this question. <laughs> um, the current government is very unstable, as we can see. We know of ructions and a turf war, especially between the Patriotic Alliance, uh, MMC, and the MMC of Finance. Uh, I cannot talk about uh, Ekuruleni, but what we can see is that the effects of that turf war, the collapse of service delivery, we can see uh, within uh, the city of Johannesburg. Residents are feeling the brunt of the turf war uh, between uh, the different MMCs. I'm sure you would have also seen a few weeks, a few months ago, uh, we had the MMC of Economic Development um, being, uh, which is ANC, uh, announcing a housing project that is supposed to fall under the housing portfolio. And there was big uh, ructions uh, with regards to that as well. So it's definitely not stable. We're expecting some, some uh, chaos. Uh, and unfortunately for all of us, uh, it would be the residents of the city of Johannesburg that would be feeling the brunt of this. We have long and, and consistently said that uh, changing mayors is not going to bring stability to the city of Johannesburg. Uh, we believe that the whole council should be dissolved. And once again, we have called on every uh, uh, you know, party in council to heed to that call and support the Democratic Alliance, because you will have a mayor, if there is any motion of no confidence, you'll have a mayor today. And in a few months' time, you possibly would have another mayor. So I wouldn't, uh, uh, we wouldn't support a motion uh, of no confidence without uh, including possibly the dissolution of council. The dissolution of the entire council and the Sunday Times actually reporting this morning about um, that turf war that you just spoke about, the PA's um, Kenny Kunen accusing the ANC's Dada Morero of sabotaging repair work um, by withholding funds. Yes, it's not a new rumor. Uh, it's, been, um, it's been there uh, for quite some time, and we can see the effect. Uh, Eldrin, I just want to put you in perspective. Sure. Uh, and 
as a ward councillor myself, uh, we get the brunt, the threats, the, you know, people marching to our homes uh, with regards to service delivery. Right now, uh, there are specifically, uh, and I'm going to be very blunt, Democratic Alliance wards that are specifically not being attended to. Uh, in between this turf war, uh, between these uh, uh, MMCs, uh, they are there's 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 uh, electricity outages that is up to seven to eight days. They are cut offs uh, of residents without notice. Uh, water being cut and power being cut without notice to residents. And when these issues are raised, uh, you know, we're being ignored. Then you also have issues of potholes where the SIP administration would rather prioritize naming of streets instead of actually fixing the, the potholes on that street. We have a big crisis in the city of Johannesburg. And let me also not remind you, uh, uh, Eldrin, remember the city of Johannesburg MMCs have VIP protectors, uh, and they prioritize those, that budget for that, instead of actual service delivery. So I can tell you the turf war is not only about monies, but it's also about who gets blue lights and who doesn't get blue lights. This is what the turf war is about so, as well. So are you saying, Belinda, that the lack of services that we are seeing, especially in wards where the Democratic Alliance um, is governing that particular ward, it is actually deliberate, it is intentional. We are alleging that, yes, it is intentional, because if it is not intentional, we would be getting responses from the, 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 not only the entities, but the politicians who head up those entities. We have messages we are sending to the administration. We are tweeting. And we believe it is because we are holding them accountable, we are questioning them about decisions that we feel is irrational, and uh, they are ignoring DA councillors. And that is the concern we have. And the unfortunate part is uh, it is the DA wards, you know, that always raise the alarm and firstly go through the right channels to try and, and raise the alarm before we go public. And we unfortunately, I know our residents are now paying for us holding the administration accountable.